It's Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. Mike Subaru is back. He is a member of the Riverside City Council. We are in Riverside today. We're in your district. Ward 3. I love it. I love that we're in your district. Thank you for inviting us here. Oh, well, thank we're, you for having glad me. glad that Charter Communications is a constituent of yours. Yes. We've been speaking about sunshine in city government, and yes. I want to continue that conversation. An interesting one for dorks like us, if I may say. <laughs> but let's back up a bit. Our last conversation was about posting agendas yes. for city council meetings, which are critical for the workings of a city, especially yeah. a city the size of Riverside, over 300,000 people. 320. Yeah, largest city in the Inland Empire. Yes. Tell us about the new rules. Well, the new rules basically, instead of following the Brown Act, which requires 72 hours, the three mm -hmm. days, we've elected to go 12 days. Okay. So that way it gives uh, staff uh, when they present different items to council and, and put the information out, council has a longer period of time to look at these things instead of just over a weekend right. for a Tuesday meeting but what and that, the public. But what that means is, is that for, let's call it Agenda A, mm -hmm. is released, yes. that is for not the meeting coming up, but the meeting after the meeting coming up. Did Provi I say that correctly? Yes, provided there's not a holiday that extends it out even further. Yeah. So one needs to really pay attention to the order of the release of the agendas because Absolutely. the agenda released again is not for mm -hmm. the upcoming meeting it's for the meeting after that yes exactly but now there's a very interesting wrinkle thrown in to this issue and it's you it's somewhat unique to Riverside and other cities with Riverside's model of government yeah explain Riverside's model of government as it relates to the mayor yeah the mayor pro tem and the council. It's, it, other cities are like this, so give us a sense. Yes. Well, most of the cities in the, the, most of the cities in this county and most in Southern California right. are not. They're, they're kind of like a general law city. Right. They don't have their own individual charter. Riverside has its own charter, okay. its operating rules, its its constitution, right. basically. And the way most of these other cities operate is they generally have five or sometimes seven, depending on the population, right. council members. Some are elected by wards, and some are just you know at large. Sure. Period, the way they they set up their their uh, procedure. And generally, you have a mayor that is going to be a representative of the council and is a member of the council, and it's one of the council members that will play the role of the mayor as well as being a council member for generally a year. Uh, most cities do that, and they rotate that through. Right. They basically rotate it either through the numbers one way or the other. The mayor is not directly elected in, in most, that situation. In most of the situ yeah, in that situation for most of the cities. The, most of the time, it's not a direct elect mayor. And so in those cities, you will have a mayor. Right. You will have a mayor pro tem, presumably, or yes. a vice mayor, whatever the right. title may be, and then three council members. Yes. All five vote. Yes. Is that accurate? Yes, they do. In other cities. Yes. This is not the Riverside model. Right. And in most of these general law cities that do not have a directed elect mayor, the council members will elect or have like right. a chairman, which becomes that mayor figurehead. Right. And generally the mayor pro tem will be the backup to the mayor. Sometimes it's the person that was just right. the mayor is how they set it up. Or about to be the mayor. Or about to be. Right. Exactly. And, and it's done either way. And then what happens is if the mayor's not able to be right. at that particular meeting, mayor pro tem takes over the duties and responsibilities of the mayor role. And what I've seen as a general proposition, the rotation of the mayor is right. non-political. Right. It, it shouldn't be. It sh yeah, but, but as a general proposition, <laughs> yeah. you will see a very seamless transition. You start with kind of district number one, and then right. it's two, and then it's three, you know, and, and it works out. I mean, it can get political, but yes. generally speaking, yes. there's no partisan politics. I mean, city councils are nonpartisan right. by definition. Right, in this state. Yeah. Riverside has a different model, a yes. model that many large cities have. Right. Tell us the Riverside model. Okay, Riverside has a directly elect mayor that's directed citywide at large. However, our mayor and some cities are like this and some are not, we have a ceremonial head mayor. Right, but let's, let me before, let's yes. talk about that. So you have a mayor. Right, Civics 101 is it? Right, you have a mayor <laughs> directly elected and you have seven council members. Yes. In this instance, elected by district. Yes, by their, and we call them wards, but wards, it's districts. Yes. by this district. And of those seven, mm -hmm. the council, not the mayor, selects a mayor pro tem, is that's, that accurate? That's, that's correct. And is it similar to the notion of, we'll rotate the mayor pro tem, it's by number, Yes. it's not political? We do it reverse order of numbers. It okay. starts at seven and goes down to one. And how long is one mayor pro tem? Six months. Okay. So I think we set it up nicely. Yes. You have the mayor, ceremonial. Does the right. mayor vote? Only on a tie break. 
only on a tiebreak. And our charter allows the mayor to have a veto power, but he can be overridden with five votes instead of the four for a majority out of that seven. Okay. And it's a done deal. And I know that your prior mayor, Ron mm -hmm. Loveridge, who was in office for 25 years about? Yes, total. I think he was mayor for 20. And had zero vetoes during his term, and I believe because he was very persuasive. And, <laughs> yeah, he didn't need to veto because he well, was... If you have the art of statesmanship, that right. often can work out. Has the current mayor, Rusty Bailey, needed to either break a tie and or veto? Yes, break a tie, but I don't believe, since I've been there, I don't believe there's been a veto. But presumably there should be a tie break because you have seven people. Yes, unless you have an absent member and then you end up with a 3-3 three, three right. vote and then the mayor's prerogative under the charter right. is to be the tie break. Or conflict. Right. Can happen. Right. Okay. As it relates Conflicted to... Conflicted out, yeah. as far as somebody not being yeah, able to happen. vote, absolutely. As it relates to the agendas, so now we're back to the mm -hmm. agendas. Who sets the agenda in the city of Riverside, which really can be quite powerful in what's being considered by the body? Yes. Currently in Riverside, there is no codified way of, or codified way of, mm. of uh, setting that up. It, it's... it's uh, it's kind of left to tradition. Mm. Uh, in looking at our what's called our rules of procedure and order mm -hmm. of business, and also our charter, there's nothing in there that talks about how these meetings are run. They're generally at uh, two o'clock on a Wednesday. These agenda setting meetings, not the council meetings. Correct, agenda setting conferences they call it. And what that will include is various staff members, usually you know assistant city managers, sometimes the city manager, city attorney, if he needs to be there to talk about any issues and generally the mayor and mayor pro tem. So, but I understand the addition of the mayor pro tem is a recent change, is that yes, accurate? I, I believe it was about five or six years ago. Okay, so and, under and, the Loveridge administration, right. the mayor pro tem came in, and again, yes. that's a rotating position. Yes. You're questioning whether that is the appropriate system. Yes. Explain why. Well, I like to have boundaries and rules. I think that when we live by them, because, you know, municipalities, they, they run by rules and laws mm -hmm. and procedures, and, and right now it's kind of open-ended and it's just tradition. Tradition can have its flaws because, well, we've always done it that way, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's applicable to today, mm. and it doesn't mean it's necessarily the right way to do it. So I'd like to see us come up with some rules or guidelines that pretty much uh, put it into our procedural rules as to how we do this. Uh, the meetings are on this day. They're uh, attended by staff, how many staff, or, or whatever it may be, mayor pro tem role, mayor Who role. Who do you want at the meeting amongst the elected, meaning the mayor right. and some combination of the seven council members? I would say the mayor pro tem, but at the same time, for instance, I've not been mayor pro tem before. I start out January 1 okay. of next year, and I plan on going to one of the meetings to sit along to see what it's like so that I won't just walk in the door going, okay, how do we do this? So, but do you believe the mayor should be present? Oh, absolutely. The mayor is an integral part of okay. this process because there's a lot of things that are done citywide in programs that the mayor's office runs, and there's a lot of presentations that are coordinated right. through the mayor's office where we give out awards or, or different things or introduce new programs. So I guess your concern and your desire is to codify the presence of the mayor pro tem. Yes. Because in theory, the mayor could say, I don't choose to have the mayor pro tem here, and there's nothing that would prevent the mayor from engaging in that right. tactic. And at the same time, I'd like it to have the council look at who might be the best to chair this. Maybe it is the mayor pro tem to chair this. Chair the, the agenda setting meeting. Uh, to chair it, yes. To the agenda setting meeting. Who and, chairs and, it now? Uh, the mayor. Officially chairs it. Uh, not by any official guidelines or rules, but by tradition. And so what does the mayor think of this? I've not talked to him about it specifically, but the idea is, is the council should decide who they want best to be the advocate for them. Do they want the mayor's office or do they want the mayor pro tem. But as a general proposition, is our relations strong with the mayor, the current mayor, and the council? Yeah, I think everything's good. There's no strain. Right. There's no problem. It's just that when you look at the rules, this is not a council meeting, and it says that for council First. meetings and other meetings, the mayor is the... Uh, First, yeah. For students of politics, this is interesting <laughs> stuff. I, I really believe that. His name is Mike Subaru. He is a city council member in Riverside. will be mayor pro tem come January. I'm Brad Pomerantz, and this is Charter Local Edition.